Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. In today's video guys, we'll be working here on Chevy Cruze guys, but what we'll be doing, it may actually work on Chevy Sonic because both of them share the same engine. We'll show you guys how to remove or how to replace your cavity converter and exhaust manifold. So stay with us guys, that's what we'll be doing. In the meantime guys, we'll have more than 200 videos on this car and every vehicle we get at the shop. Why? Because our mission guys is to save you as much money as we can. All we need guys in return, subscribe to the channel, like the video and drop a comment below. Uh, let us know what you think, if it was helpful, anything guys, so we have some feedback. So this is the Chevy Cruze 2015 model 1.8 engine. If you have the 1.4 guys, we'll be adding one uh, to, uh, to the shop quick. We'll be getting one very soon. Also, all of the videos that we'll be doing on this one, like body panels, interior, door panels, all that will be guys uh, applying to the 1.4 engine as well. So, let's go ahead, show you guys what you need to do. Uh, what we'll do now guys, you notice that our radiator fan, okay, our radiators are out of the way. You don't have to do any of that stuff. We'll actually go ahead and remove even the bumper. So we can guys show you better how to remove your catalytic converter and exhaust manifold. Because you can see from here, it's not very easy to show you. So what we will actually do, I'm going to go ahead and remove the bumper. Okay, you don't have to do that guys, one more time. You just have to uh, follow what we're going to do, stay with us. First we need to go ahead and remove the oil dipstick and then we'll continue guys with the next step. So this is guys the dipstick, you can see that we don't have the air filter box, that's because we'll be uh, taking the engine completely apart guys, as I said we'll have more than 200 videos. Also we'll have quite a few electrical videos on our brand new channel, please check it out as well. So, now, the dipstick guys, in order to remove it now, okay you can see right here we have one bolt with reverse torx that we need to remove. And what is a reverse torx socket? Okay, it's this socket right here guys. All that will be listed in the description of the video below, all the tools and parts, okay, for your convenience, guys. So, let me see exactly which one it is now. Okay, this is the Reverse Torx 12. Yep, this is it. Reverse Torx 12 socket, guys, that we will need to use now. So, if you have the hose, guys, here for the secondary air pump, not all engines will have that. Uh, what I'll do, I'll actually go ahead and remove it right here. You have two places where you squish. Okay, and you pull it out and we have the same thing on this side, okay. But those are actually sideways, okay, those things are sideways, so. Grab them here, okay. Perfect, now I'll be able to pull that hose out so we don't break it because that's probably an expensive thing. So we need to get, guys, I'm going to get a extension and the reverse torx 12 socket, guys, and we're going to go ahead and remove that bolt now. Okay, let's come from right here so you can see a little bit better. Perfect. Now once it comes loose, okay, that thing usually goes pretty, pretty easy by hand. Okay, now the bolt, that's what it looks like guys. Okay, this is, uh, this is the bolt right here. Next, I'm going to grab that, okay, that dipstick and just wiggle it and pull it up guys, okay, like that. We're going to leak some oil out, so if you want to reduce the amount of oil that you leak out, I will recommend guys to drain your oil before you do that, because you can see we just dropped a few, a few dots there. So I'm getting under the vehicle guys, we'll be using Interphone guys, check out this spray will be listed in the description of the video below guys, it is amazing, amazing penetrating spray and oil guys, so what I do, I, can, I already sprayed those, okay a few minutes ago, and I let it work usually about 15 to 20 minutes on things like that, so I don't have to break bolts all the time and cause, okay, cause so much uh, more work because later, you have to hammer those out and all that stuff so what I'll do now okay I'm going to go ahead and remove the three nuts okay that hold the uh, exhaust to the catalytic converter there okay you can see so that's what we'll be doing next one nut is out okay let me get the second
And now the third one. I cannot believe they came out so easy. That spray is amazing, guys. Okay, perfect. Now I can go ahead and pull the exhaust out of the catalytic converter. Okay, let me see if anything else is holding or it's just the flex pipe. Okay, perfect. You can see nothing else is holding here. So we removed the bumper guys so we can show you all the detail now right here we have two more balls that we need to remove and I'm going to spray that one and there is one okay on this side I'm going to spray them that way okay they'll soak a little bit until I find the socket and uh, we can go ahead and remove them this bolt here and there is one on the other side they hold the catalytic converter to the uh, engine block so now guys we need a reverse torque socket you can find that one listed in the description of the video below reverse torque 12 and uh, I will go underneath the vehicle okay and let me show you hopefully you can see guys okay where that bolt is right there perfect this one came out now we have one more just like this one Okay, on the other side. Okay, guys, this one came out as well now. Okay, let me show you what the bolts look like. Okay, this is the bolt and this is the other one. They're identical. So, we can continue with the next step. So, with the same guys, reverse Torx 12. We're going to remove... Okay, one more bolt here. Okay, and this is where the uh, <coughs> the mount for the oxygen sensor is located. This is for the upstream oxygen sensor, also known as one the sensor one. Okay, perfect. This one is out. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the oxygen sensor as well. Okay, so all of that is ready to go here. Perfect. Now, what else we need to do? Okay, let's come on this side now. Okay, right here. And I'm going to show you, we need to guys remove two more, okay, uh, two more bolts, and I'm talking about this bolt, okay, right here. So I'll get the little impact again, this is very handy impact, and remove them. One, and two. Now guys. What we can do, okay, let's come on the top. Okay. I'm going to show you, we'll try to pull that thing out. Okay, but it's not going to come out. What we'll do now, guys, I'll get the socket for the, okay, uh, for the oxygen sensor. We'll remove it so we can get that thermal shield out of there. So this is, guys, the socket for the oxygen sensor. All that will be listed again in the description of the video below, guys, for your convenience. I'll get an extension here, go through the cable. Okay, see how it has a side cut. Okay, let me see which one will be a better way. Because the thermal shield now is a little bit, okay, in the way, so I need to see exactly which way will be more convenient for me, okay. Let me just go ahead and get a shorter extension because this one is a little bit too long, so give me just a second. Okay, perfect. Just the other extension was too long. Now, okay, we'll get the oxygen sensor out. So usually once you get them loose guys they tend to go by hand after you get them loose about one revolution I noticed but we could have done that before we remove the thermal shield I didn't want to do it because why to do extra work if we can get away with it without doing too much work so okay I'm going to go ahead and just unscrew the whole oxygen sensor now Okay, you can see it's almost 
coming out. Perfect. This is guys your oxygen sensor now. I can go ahead and pull that thermal shield out, I believe. Unless I have something else still holding here. Okay, let's double check here. And from what it seems like, okay guys, we're hitting here. Okay, we're hitting on that bolt right here. Okay, so let me see if I'll be able to pull it out or we will have to either remove the AC hose or we'll have to remove, okay, that bolt and pull it up. Now, if you remove the AC hose, you have to drain the whole system. We don't want to do that because that's extra water, guys. So, what I will do now, okay, I'm going to get a 13 millimeter soap. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and remove the engine mount here. Okay, that's an engine hook, excuse me. Well, bad news now, guys. You have to remove, if you want to do that, you have to remove the... Uh, now, let me show you what your options are. You have to remove your secondary air pump, if you have one, or you have to remove the AC hose, but you have to vacuum down your AC system. You cannot just go ahead and remove it. So, in our case, guys, we already don't have anything in the AC system, so those are your options. Remove your uh, your secondary air pump because it's on top here, okay? And in order to remove that engine hook, you have to remove the pump first, uh, uh, secondary air pump, and then you can get to the bolt and remove that hook and pull it straight up. Or we're going to actually go ahead and remove the Okay, the hose is for the AC compressor, but our system is already vacuumed down, so if yours is not, okay, you have to decide which way to go. But if you have Freon and you remove those hoses, you will explode in your face, gas, Freon, refrigerant everywhere, and that can severely hurt you. Perfect, so... I can go ahead and remove that one now, I believe. Let's see. Yep came out okay that's the thermal shield guys right here so let's see what else we need to do now you can see we're to the point that we're to the catalytic converter and uh, this is the engine exhaust manifold as well you cannot just replace the catalytic converter you have to replace the whole assembly so guys with that uh, thermal shield out of the way okay let me turn the light for you so you can see a little bit better Right here, 10 millimeter socket, guys, and we start removing a few nuts. Okay, one is coming out. Check out what the nut looks like. One. Okay, we have one in this corner here. Perfect. So far, two nuts, three. Okay, those you have to be careful not to drop it. For us, it's way easier now because we don't have the radiator in the way. Four. And now the fifth one is a little bit in an angle here, so let me see how I'm going to approach this one now. Now, we go on top, guys, right here. Six, seven. Okay, working on the eight one now. And now the ninth one, guys. Okay, so nine, 10 millimeter nuts. Okay, I'm going to show you all of them right here now. Okay, check them out, all the nuts. Now, what we can do, guys, okay, let me see. We can grab that exhaust manifold, gently pull it like that, and go up, guys. And this is your, guys, catalytic converter with the exhaust manifold out of the way. Okay, you can see the whole assembly just like that. So, 
That's how you guys remove it. So that's how you guys remove the catalytic converter and the exhaust manifold on Chevy Cruze. The replacement one and the part numbers guys, all that will be listed in the description of the video below guys. Check it out uh, and see where we get our replacement parts from. Putting it together is in reverse order with two kilo part. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.